This video is based on my reviewing old past papers and uncovering some random elements, well I consider them random elements, things that are often hidden in very broad topics and they might help you. So we'll start with what is a portal system and give an example of it and then what are the functions of the liver. A portal system is a blood pathway that begins with capillaries and ends with capillaries and the hepatic portal vein is the common example we used. It carries blood rich in nutrients from the small intestine to the liver. The functions of the liver. The liver produces bile, it makes urea, it breaks down toxins, it generates heat and it stores nutrients such as glycogen and those fat soluble vitamins. These are just some of the functions of the liver. Also, you should be able to draw and label this diagram and remember the arrows are so important you will lose marks if you do not include the arrows to show the direction of the blood flow. What is meant by non-nuclear inheritance? It's basically the location of genes on DNA that is outside of the nucleus. So where else do you find DNA in a cell? Well, you find it in the mitochondria and also in the chloroplasts of plant cells. Respiration and photosynthesis are huge topics on your course, so it's really worth your while learning how to draw and label the mitochondrion and the chloroplast. And consider questions like, where is the location of the electron transport chains in the mitochondria? Well, they're on the inner membrane and the more cristae in foldings, the more electron transport chains. Where in the chloroplast do the light stage reactions take place? They take place in the grana. And where in the chloroplast would you find enzymes? In the stroma. And this is where the dark stage reactions or the Calvin cycle takes place. What is endoplasm? Well, this was found in a very old paper and it's all associated or connected to the chapter on the amoeba. So the amoeba is a protist. It's a member of the protistic kingdom and you should be able to draw and label this diagram. Essential, very important. So when you're talking about endoplasm, you're looking at the cytoplasm of the amoeba because there are two parts to it. There is the endoplasm on the inside, which is watery, and then you've got a more thicker or gel-like layer towards the edges called the ectoplasm. And it's the flow of the cytoplasm which helps the amoeba to move by forming these pseudopods or pseudopodia. And pseudopods are not just for movement. Pseudopodia are also formed when the amoeba wants to surround and engulf its prey or to take in food. And this process is called phagocytosis. So once the food is taken in by the amoeba, a food vacuole forms around it. And into this food vacuole is secreted acid to kill the prey and then digestive enzymes to break down the food. So finally, what is a facultative anaerobe? It is an organism that can respire both with and without oxygen. So we'll take the yeast cell as an example because it's a facultative anaerobe. If there is oxygen present, it can respire aerobically. But if there is no oxygen present, it can switch to anaerobic respiration or fermentation. And this is the basis on how we produce alcohol or the alcohol industry. Yeast is a fungus and we've encountered this unicellular organism in so many places throughout the course. You've encountered it when you were doing enzyme immobilization. Then you also encountered it when you were doing respiration or alcohol fermentation. So it's really important that you do study yeast. Go over how it reproduces budding, be able to draw and label its diagram. Very important and can be tricky to draw as well. And remember that it has a cell wall made of chitin. So that covers my random elements, things that I just noticed today in exam papers, which I thought, yes, they're worth discussing. Maybe they'll direct you to other places on your course where you need to look at things. The very best of luck with the exams. You can only do your best. Take care.